Oh, today we have a doozy, a low light shootout between the fantastic A7 IV and the stupendous Panasonic S5 II. And here's a spoiler alert, they're both great. Let's talk about it. So for my low light test, I like to include a practical situation. So I take these cameras out in the backyard of the east wing of my estate. And then I just show how they do outside in the nighttime, because really that is the time you're probably going to have the least amount of light when you're out there running and gunning, like the kids say, and you don't have any lights because of course you should always bring lights. Professionals have lights wherever they go, but maybe you're making a documentary about mole rats and you know, you can't bring lights down into the hole of a mole, right? They, they don't like that. They will uh, not participate in your documentary. So uh, which of these cameras will be better for you when you're invading the homes of mole rats? We're about to find out. And fun towards the end, I will show the iPhone 13 Pro in comparison to these two full frame beasts, just so that you can see the difference between what a fantastic low light camera will do with a big sensor compared to a little iPhone, just for fun and for reference. And I will also do a more scientific test where I will just keep everything the same except raise the ISO in the cameras so that you can see the noise level at each particular ISO. But I really like the practical tests of going out so you can see the difference out there in the dark. Well, the first thing I'm going to show is if you shoot in log. Now, I wouldn't recommend you shoot in log if you're in extreme low light conditions like I'm about to show, because uh, if you expose log, if you underexpose log, you're going to get some really grainy, messy footage. So uh, I like to use standard picture profiles when I'm shooting in extreme low light. So I will show those tests after. But first, let's go with the log. Now, I will say that the Panasonic will only go to uh, 51,200 as its max ISO. It does have an extended ISO, but that range is not available for vlog. So uh, this will max out at 51,200. This guy can go all the way to 102,400. Let's check it out now. Now the next test is how I would actually use the cameras. If I went out shooting in low light, I would just use the standard profiles. I find the standard profiles do a good job when it's extreme low light because you know the cameras, they do some noise reduction for you. I left all the settings on standard and uh, I like the way the image looks and it's not the same as log when you underexpose log, you won't see that grainy mess until much higher ISOs. Now in this one, the ISO actually goes higher on the S5 II. Since I'm using the extended ISO, this can go up to 204,800 ISO compared to the 100 and 2,400 that the A7 IV can do.
So tell me down in the comments below which one you preferred out of the standard profile. And now next comes the most practical test of all. And that is if let's just say you want the camera to take care of the work for you. You put it in auto ISO, you put it in auto white balance, and then you see how it does. Now I did use auto white balance on the a7 IV, but I use auto white balance with white priority. I find that works a lot better, especially if you are around warm lights like I have out there in handsome yards. And uh, the S5 II, it has auto white balance and auto white balance cool and auto white balance warm. But I found that uh, basically, the auto white balance is the best thing to use without the cool or the warm with the S5 II. And now since we are using auto ISO in this case, again, we don't go into those extended ISOs. It caps out at 51,200. <laughs> So I thought the Sony fared better in this case because first of all, I like the way it white balanced better in that situation as long as you're using white priority. And of course, because in auto, this guy will go all the way to 102,000 400, then it can do that. Now, you if you are in a situation where you've maxed out to 51,200, you could just go in to your ISO, just a button right here on the top, and then you could move it up to your heart's content, right up to 204,800. So it is available for you. But I'm just saying, if you're going to use just the auto settings, walk around, have the camera do the work, the a7 IV is going to do a better job for you. Now here's that iPhone 13 test I was gonna show you. As you can see, having a big honking camera with a big honking sensor is a really great thing, especially if you are out in low light. So I'll sign off here, but I will tack on the uh, scientific test where I sit in the studio and I just raise the ISO so you can compare the ISOs to each other. So thanks for watching. I'm sure you found this video as illuminating as I did. <laughs> you, can't, you can't thumbs down now. You made it this far. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.